Okay. Thank you. Thanks for reminding me. Um, so, like I was saying, uh, the type, the way in which we actually insert the contents for an unordered list is different from what we used to have before. You guys will remember that when we were treating, for example, uh, a paragraph element, we had something like we have an opening tag, a P, and then we have a closing tag, another P. Then we have something like the content, yeah, right? But in this case, uh, between the opening and the closing tag of an unordered element, we that's where we're gonna have the list. And the list are encapsulated in an LI tag. And the list are encap encapsulated in an LI tag. So everything you wanna list inside that unordered list will be wrapped in LI as much as you want, at least for now in the fundamental aspect of things. You, so if you have, let's say, 30 list of 500 list, 1 million list of items, you're going to wrap each of them in an LI tag. So what it means is you're going to have the first wrapper, which is the un, uh, unordered list wrapper or unordered list tag, and the closing one. Then in between the opening and the closing UL uh, tags, you have all your lists, and each list will be wrapped in an LI tag. So LI means list. So this is a list, this is another one, another one, and so on and so forth that you have. Now, how does this look in a web format when you eventually render this on a website? So I kind of bring it to the side. You have a, a UL list, you have all the lists, you have milk, eggs, and flour. By the time you write this in an HTML format, this is what you get. So it gives you those items in a bullet format. That's it, it's as simple as that. So. The only thing you guys need to take care, take note of in this one is that the UL tag or an ordered list element is slightly different from what you have in paragraphs, in uh, header elements and all that. This one, you have to have an, a UL opening and closing and then have your list wrapped in between inside an LI tags. So that's it. Now, how about an ordered list? Uh, as you know, UL stands for an ordered list. OL would definitely stand for an, an, an ordered list. Ordered list, yeah. And the same way, you have an opening tag and you have the closing tag. Now, how do you render this as well? The same way, you're going to have your opening and closing OL tags, and then you're going to have your list elements inside of those opening and closing OL tags. So in this case, we have a list, phi, theta, kappa. You can have as many as possible, depending on what you're doing on your website. Or in the same way, you're going to wrap them in an OL format. So in this case, this when you render on an uh, on a web browser, you have something that is numbered. So it's going to be one, five, two will be theta, three will be kappa, and so on and so forth. That's it. It's as simple as that. So what you need to note again is how these tags are arranged when you're writing your code. So that forms the first part we're gonna to treat today. It's simple. Does anybody have any question? Because you are gonna try this out on your browser. I put a message in the WhatsApp group earlier and on Slack that you guys should go ahead and download those files uh, that I already uploaded for lesson three. If you haven't done so, can you quickly go onto that Google Drive, download and extract those files, and let's, let me know, uh, or if you already have it downloaded and extracted, can you please show a hand in your um, in this Zoom so I can know? Because we're going to start with the first exercise for today, for the list elements. Thank you. Okay. Seeing a couple of hands. So I assume some people are not yet downloaded that. So if you have not, can you please take the next one minute to quickly download you already know how we did this the last time download and extract to your computer and then we'll continue in one minute so i have mine ready uh we'll just wait for you guys to get yours ready as well So if you already have it downloaded, can you please um, 
open your VS code and uh, let it be a blank sheet so that we can bring in the files that we need for this first exercise. Um, yeah, for this first exercise. We can put our hands down. Oh yeah, please. Thank you. Ah, no condi penis. Okay, sorry. So, um, if you already have those files downloaded and extracted, please open your VS Code, and from your VS Code, um, from your VS Code, can you please uh go into your folders like we did the last time locate where you will extract those files into. Uh, for me, I have it in my desktop. I'm going to coding tutorial and I'm going here right into the lessons, into lesson three and lesson three documents. And we are starting with list elements. So 3.1 Yes, yes, 3.0 list elements. So this is our goal for today, for this first um, uh, exercise, I mean, uh, close this. So this will be our goal for, for the first exercise. Um, we have a recipe. I would want you guys to look into this code. Split right. So I have you this already. Um, what I want you guys to do for me is update this. Uh, let's have this to look exactly like this, like what we have in the goal. Um, having seen what I did here, as far how the UL works, as well as the OL. Uh, so this is wrong, actually. I'm sorry, this is an error and I'll fix it right away. This should be OL. Not okay. You. okay. So we're going to use the same concepts as we have in both the unordered lists and the ordered lists. So you see the unordered list, I'm just going through it again while you try to open your files. Uh, we have the UL tags and inside that we have the list elements and uh, you can list all the items in there same way we have the ordered list and um, the difference between the unordered and the ordered is that the unordered uses a ul tag on the outside while an a ordered list uses uh, the ol tag on the outside so you're going to go into this file um, 3.0 list elements this is what we want to achieve I already have the files here for you. I mean, the code here for you. You can change, you can remove my name and let it be your own recipe for whatever you think it is. I don't know. Uh, this is just an example. What I want to see is um, a demonstration of the list elements, both the odd, unordered one and the ordered one. Any questions, guys? None, fair enough. Remember, when you want to start, uh, you need to right click in your code and then click on show preview. So you would see how the code looks like at that time before you start to work. Um, yeah, guys, uh, let's quickly, let's quickly do this together. Um, yeah, welcome, Abiodu. Sorry, I saw you coming. Um, Thank you, sir. Yeah, we started with the list elements today. We're, we're looking at um, we're looking at um, intermediate HTML right now, and uh, we started with list elements. So uh, we just did the unordered lists, and I showed some samples and how it's been arranged in an HTML. Uh, as well, we have ordered lists. Uh, so the unordered list comes as a bullet point when you arrange them in your HTML file. We also have ordered lists that 
has an OL tag. Uh, so the difference between the ordered and unordered is the UL and the OL. So for the ordered list, it has an OL tag outside and the list would be in an LI tag inside. So uh, when this is rendered, you see it has serial numbers, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so we have this first exercise, uh, the list elements uh, to do. And that's why we, that's what they just assume finished. So we're gonna do that together just to have an idea of how this looks. So whoever did not finish his own, that's fine. We have other ones to do. Um, so for this one, and even as it is right now, my live preview is not working. So I'm gonna use a different, um, I'm gonna use a different uh, plugin to be able to show the preview for now while I fix this later. Uh, so let me use, I'm gonna use live server. If, if we don't, if, um, okay, that's, if we yeah. download this live, live server onto our app, no, you will don't it need be conflicting? It. No, you don't need it. You, st you should stick to your uh, live preview. I'm using this because my live preview is not working for some reason. I don't know why. Right. Yeah, so you guys should still stick to your own live preview. Once I fix it, I will reverse too. Um, so let me quickly share this. So this is live server that I'm using now. Um, so quickly, let's solve this together. Yeah. So um, the where is the goal again? Goal, goal, goal. So first, I have the header Latif's recipe for the best cinnamon rolls, and I'm going to quickly start with that. My laptop is acting so crazy right now. It's been more than a month that I shut it down. I think it's getting tired. I have to shut down. Maybe when we're on break, I'll restart. I don't know how to do that. So. Okay. So for the Latif cinnamon roll, for the uh, recipe for the best cinnamon roll, what's wrong with this thing? I think there's, a, there's an error here. This is not aligning with what we have, right? I did rubbish, Shay. Not really. You just uh, type what you liked. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> On a recipe. <laughs> we get the gist. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is that I can't find the, I think something got missing here. Latif oh, recipe. Latif cinnamon roll recipe. Uh, imagine. Latif so recipe it? for the best cinnamon roll. So I'm going to update that. You, you had a roll somewhere. <laughs> we, we have typed it the way we saw it. So we don't really care. No problem. Thank you. Um, so for this one, I'm going to use an H1 tag. Where is it again? H1. If, when we like use H1, it, it was looking gi gi gigantic. Gigantic, so. right? Okay. Let's see. We can use H2 if that is the case. Even H3 that looks like what you have. Really? So technically, I did H345. Because the size of what you have is... is yeah, I did H3 as well. But this is H1. Your computer is confusing us. These are the <laughs> <laughs> the, the when I check one, my own goal on your own, it looked like H345 in that Okay, order. no problem. That's fine. I don't think that would be an issue. What is important is we need to get that structure right. Okay. The next thing would be ingredients. Um, um as okay, like as yes, long sir. as it is the heading, we can use H1 to H. You should actually use H1. Mm. Yeah, you should use H1. Thank you. So the next one will be an H2, so which is the ingredients. I'm going to cut that out. Uh, okay. So I have ingredients. Uh, if I save this, sorry, I have to be refreshing because this is a, a live server. It's not uh, live preview. So this one works differently. 
So we have ingredients, and then for the dough, that would be uh, an H3. So we have for the dough, I have an H3. Save that, refresh. So I have for the dough. Yeah, this is cool, right? I believe everybody would have gotten this one because we already did this one last week. So the next thing would be three quarter cup of milk. So this one forms our first bullet. And I'm gonna have a UL first. And inside the UL, I'll have an LI tag and paste this here. So that's our first one. Refresh, I have three quarter cup of milk. Now for me to be able to do the other ones easily, I will do what, what I did last week. Uh, shift option, if you're on Mac and then down, I will copy like uh, five or six, I think we have on that list, yeah. And I can edit what we have here. So the next one would be one- Whoa, 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 whoa. How the hell did you do that? <laughs> Okay, so I'll go back. Um, so I'll place my cursor in front of the first the, the first list that I created. So my cursor will be here. And once you place your cursor there on Windows, you will press Shift. What's that thing called? On Windows, what's it called? It's called arrow down. Arrow down. No, it's called. I arrow down. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, alt. It's called Alt on Windows. So you press Shift Alt, and then you you keep pressing arrow down. I mean button down. Oh, got it. Yeah, as long as you want it, you keep pressing the button down. So oh my, I've been copying and pasting since, so that's why I'm having it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that's a short like me, I've actually been typing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. What part of the things we are learning in this class is to work smart. So the software developers are lazy guys. We like to find a shortest cut to think, to doing things. That's one of the things we are going to be learning here. So shortcut to do that will be to do shift, um, uh, shift option or shift alt down. And then you keep copying as long as you want. So I'll just be replacing what I have in here. And then the next one is half cup granulated sugar. I'll cut it and replace it here. Uh, the next one is a uh, one egg one egg plus one egg yolk. I'll copy that. I mean, cut that, put it in here. And the next one is one quarter cup butter. Okay, cut that as well. Bring it in here. Sorry, my this thing is small today, Abby. Let me make it big. Oh, wow. On Anovex. One quarter, yeah. And then the last one is three cups bread flour. So three cups bread flour, I'll cut that as well and put that on this list. Now, if I save this and I refresh, this is what you get. Okay, so we move on to the next one. The next one is for the filling and that's gonna come just exactly the way I have this. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, we are a lazy bunch of people. I would go here, highlight all of this. So if you look at what I'm doing now, I'm going to highlight all of this and then do the same thing. Shift option down. So it copies exactly what I have there down for me. Then I can edit. Okay, for the filling, I'll cut this, put it in here. I am a Dao. Amisa. Ah. I'll go to the next one. Two third cup dark brown sugar. I'll cut that. And it took bola when you follow no root. One and a half tablespoon ground cinnamon. I'll cut that. Bring it in here. Uh here. Uh -huh. And then one quarter cup butter. Yeah, one quarter cup butter. Where is it? What's salad? Yeah. Last. Yes. Are you calling me? Sorry. I thought someone called me. And that comes here. Okay. And then I can remove the rest of this because on that line, uh, we have only three actually. Two thirds dark brown sugar. Okay. So we don't have this one. If I save this and refresh my browser again. I have this, two-third cup brown sugar, blah, blah, blah. 
blah, 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 blah. Now instructions, instructions seems bigger. So we're gonna go back to H2. Uh, so H2 here is ingredients. We're gonna have the same H2 down. So I'll just copy that and bring it down here. And then this one is actually instructions. So I'll copy instructions, I mean, cut it, put it in here. And then the next thing you have are uh, uh, ordered list elements. So let, now let's do the ordered list elements. Oh, wow. So I will have OL. And then inside the OL, I will have the LI tag. And inside the LI tag now, we'll start with the first one. Mix the milk with the yeast sugar eggs. So cut, cut all this and put it in here. And like we did before, uh, on that list, I should be having, I think, 10. So I'll just make this in multiple of 10. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then I can start cutting and pasting in there. Melt the blah, 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 blah. That goes in here. This is fun, right, guys? Is yeah, it? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so good. Thank you. So then we we'll go to the next one. Knead the dough for 10 minutes. I'm just going to put this on the same line before I cut it. Minutes. Typographical error, minutes, yeah. And then I'll cut this as well, bring it in here. Next one. Did I ask you to find anything for me? Okay, we'll move on to the next one. We cut it, bring it in here. And then I go again to the next one. Just bring it on the same line, cut everything, bring it in here. The next time we go to spread the filling onto the dough, blah, 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 blah. Bring that in here. You see, we are creating, we are helping Jam Jam to create something for our business. Jam Jam, we are creating we did for you. For you. Well, you are not even knowing where my mind is going with this line. Good day. Where is your mind going? Your mind wants to go and do cinnamon roll now, right? No. So, they say people should be spreading things. Me, that's why my mind is traveling. So, uh, spread it now. Nah. So, where is my um, hold on? Because it could never be me. Okay, and that's it. We're done. <laughs> Any <laughs> questions? Hold on first. Let's know if we have questions. How will we know if we have not finished? Okay. Spread the filling. Um, cut the dough. Baking tray. Oh, no. the okay, end. I have a question. Go ahead. So I was done with mine. And I had this challenge of my preview was it was extremely big. It was extremely big. That's fine. You can do, if you're on Windows, you can do that window button or control and then minus. So control minus, it zooms in for you. Okay. It looks like you zoomed out at some point. Maybe you forgot to zoom back in. Or your window is just by default zoomed out. You can actually make your windows by default to zoom in if you don't have any issues with seeing tiny letters. But for the sake of this one, just do control minus button and do it several times. It will zoom in for you. Okay. Any other question, guys? Yes. Okay. Question. Oh, yes. Um, uh -huh. I don't mean. Did you didn't mute yourself? I'm with you, sir. No, uh, mute. Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sure I miss. I missed something. Um, okay. The instruction. Okay. I was looking for the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three. You were oh, lady. Uh -huh. because I knew it has been codified somewhere. Um, you you understand what the, I mean? Uh, yes, this one. Yes. yes. Okay, so that's represented here. So you see this OL, uh, it's uh -huh. called ordered list. So anytime okay. you use OL, instead of using UL, yeah, UL will make these bullets give you bullets. But when okay. you use OL, OL. It's ordered. Okay. So it's ordered okay. for you. Okay. Now, if everybody is okay with this, or is there any other question before I want to say something? We still have to do screenshots. Screenshot. Uh, yeah, you can do that screenshot if you don't, if you want to. Um, you don't have to do it anymore. Once we solve the problem, that's fine. So, um, I'm gonna ask. Yes, sir. So, if I use OL, yes, if sir. I have item 
up to one million. It's yes. released them up to one million. Yes, as much as we put all the item here. So um um I don't know how best to say this. So there's 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 a caveat. Okay. Um right now we are dealing with HTML. Um, we are just gonna be like I said the last class, we are learning A, B, C to Z, and then we start we are learning A and and B E B C A T cat. That's what we are doing right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So listing this thing like this, listing uh if it, like you said, one million items mm -hmm. in the real sense, in the real coding scenario, you're not gonna list one million items. Um, we're gonna mark them, but we won't get we won't do that now. I'm just trying to tell, let you know that this would not be the standard way of doing it in the in the end. Uh, but right now you need to know this first before you go into how to map them. So right now you're gonna list. If you have one million elements, you will list them like this. As much as you use the OL, it will continue. So if I do something like if I copy all this and put it down and save it, the numbering continues. So if I refresh. You see, yeah. the numbering will continue. As long as you have elements here, it will number from one to zero. Mm -hmm. Now, get to a part today where you can specify for HTML or for the browser where to start the numbering. There, are, will, be, there will be situations where you don't want to start numbering from one. You may actually want to start from 20 or start from 30. There's a way we do that. We'll get to that one today as well. So for now, this is what we this is what we just learned, and this is what we have done. So, if there is no any other question, we will move to the next thing. But before I move, um, I'm just looking through the stuff that you guys posted here. Majid, would there be any reason why your own uh, for the feeling is kind of off the tab? Can you look at that and see if there's any if there is any if you made here that you can do. what it looks like you did not wrap it inside the ul tag if i am assuming that's what makes it look like this. are you talking okay if you're trying to talk we cannot hear you your, your microphone is behaving right now but yeah just take that if you can make the corrections later. okay guys hear me now Yes, I can. Okay, so for the filling, I did not wrap it in a UL tag. That's why I wrapped it in an H3 tag. For the yeah, sorry, that I mean the list under the under that the list under for the filling is well wrapped too. So oh, why is it so different? It's off. It's off the tab. If you can look at that yourself, you see that it's kind of not aligning with the other ones. You can okay. See. All right. Let me check it. Let me check it. Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 Three, okay. Okay. I know what happened. There. there are three things that you have to. You have to. You no. Have no. To. No. I know what happened. So, okay. Don't worry. Cool. So fix what. I know what happened. I'll there. fix it now. Okay. So I'm just looking at the. I want to be making sure I look at them and see if there is anything I need to correct before we move on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Alamin, why did you give us extra opening and closing? I mean, Ariomo, sorry, not Alamin. Ariomo, you gave us an extra opening and closing tag. How did that get there? Please take it out, Baba. I corrected it. I just didn't upload it, sir. Upload okay. it. Please upload the corrected version. Are you the chat? I have corrected it, sir. Okay. Um, I beg my own. Give me them last one. But uh, Wolf of Abadin, sir, what happened? You had 14 on that list, it's like you split some of the items. That's fine, anyway. I know it's an error, it's not what we're actually looking for. Is that the same? We should cook, you will go and cook what I don't know. Please, I can add curry inside inside bread. You just and I mean you just you just split the whole thing as you like, anyways. But what is no, no. I want to see the list. This is how you know people that have not subscribed to my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you call us did you call us the YouTube channel? Did you tell me? Okay, yeah. Now you have it, but you still have two on that list. What why why are you throwing out the third one? <laughs> they, they no subscribe. You don't like you don't I, like that one. <laughs> <laughs> the issue. Don't you like well, that one, sugar? I'm talking to Majid. 
Okay. I'm talking to Majid. You threw out one of those things on the list. But anyway, that's that's fine. Um, thank you guys. I'm I'm really glad that you guys are getting it. I want to make sure you guys do the most parts. That's why I'm not I'm only using the presentation and then throwing you into the lion's den because this way you'll be able to build your muscle memories and then things will start getting easier and easier and easier. Thank you. Okay, so we're moving on to the next one. Uh, while others are trying to fix whatever issues they have on theirs. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is nesting and indentation. And you see, I, write, I wrote how to write good code. Um, so there is a way you write a code that anybody from any part of the world, if they come across your code, they would be able to read it exactly the same way you were thinking when you were writing those code. Oh. So how do you do that? By using the standards, by writing in a standard way. So like I said, the last class is not just about writing the codes. It's about using the standard methods to write your code such that anybody who picks up your code in any at any time, be it 100 years later, they would still be able to understand what you wrote there. So one of those things is nesting and indentation. How do you indent your code? How do you nest items or elements inside another element? Now, if you guys can look at my screen, you would see that on this side, I have a UL tag, which is this. So the opening and the closing is there. And as usual, you know that when you have a UL tag or an odd on ordered list, you are going to have your list items inside that unordered list. But then there's something that is happening here. So we have the first list, make up and brush it, drink 500 milliliters of warm water, do yoga for an hour, make omelets, and then I now have an embedded UL inside this LI tag. So look at this very well, guys. This is an LI tag with an opening and a closing tag. Now, inside that LI tag, you see that before I closed the LI tag, I now embedded another UL tag. So this, is a, this was a UL tag, which is a parent tag. Now there's another grandchild tag inside here, which is a UL before the closing of that list. And then inside that UL, I have a um, list of items as well. Wow. Now, you are going to need this in so many cases when you need to show some levels in terms of maybe you are in your website, you need to show something is part of this and then there's another part of that and all that. So this is how to write that in a standard way because it will be easy for me to read this and know what exactly you're doing. And when you put this in, uh, in a browser, this is what you see. So you have make up and brush it, drink 500 milliliters of water. And when you get to make omelet, you see there's another, so, another as, as um, bullet omelet. points. Thank yeah, you. Bullet. Another bullet point that falls under make omelet. So when you are making omelet, you can break that down. So making omelet means whisk egg with milk. Somebody will be thinking, why is it all about food, food, food? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I like food. Anyway, um, whisk eggs with milk, add butter to pan, add in eggs and stir. When solid, add salt. And then finally, you have another LI tag. So now, this LI tag, this one, this one, this one, and this one, they are all on the same level. While we have UL, and all the lists inside on a different level. That's why you have it this way. So uh, don't mind the space in between here. There shouldn't be any space here. It's, it's part of it. So it should be just a, a level up. So this is what you get when you write it like this. Now, imagine if I haven't used the nesting and indentation. Uh, and that's where the importance of this nesting and indentation comes in. Let's say I wrote it like this. Can somebody tell me how convenient it is for you to read this code and know what exactly I'm trying to do? I don't think there will be more, more, uh, many people here who can depict this code without those indentations compared to what we have here. You can imagine, look at what we had here and then look at this. It's a whole lot of difference. So this but, shows- but you get the same results? Yes, you will get the same results. Just when you look at the code, it might not make sense. Exactly. So what, we're, what I'm trying to talk about here is standard practice. How do you write good code? So we're not just learning how to code. 
but then we need to know how to write code it better in a good way so that anybody who picks it up will be able to know oh this is what you're trying to do here so this is the importance of nesting and indentation thank you guys as a good coder that i am now i know how to i know how to do it exactly you are becoming good coders <laughs> of course you are a good coder now okay so it's the roof of Yanopaja. Oh, it's the roof of Yanopaja that is not talking. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So now let's even look at a very crazy one. A very crazy one, and this is in the real sense. Um. To be honest with you guys, in the real sense, um, you're going to be dealing with the most craziest ones when you are doing the real coding. So. Um, let's try and understand what's going on here. So we have um, this one. We have an L, UL, a UL tag, which is the parent tag, our parent element. And then we have an LI inside, another LI. Now inside this LI, we have a UL, but you see, it's very hard to kind of read. And this is what we want to achieve. Okay, we want to achieve this. So we have, a, we have an unordered list. Uh, that has an A, B, and C. So these three are part of the original unordered list. Now, the B part now has an embedded or uh, nested unordered list again, which is B, 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 I mean, B, A, B, B, and B, C. Now, inside B, B, we actually nested an a ordered list again, ordered list now BB1, BB2, and BB3. But you know that it is very impossible or almost impossible to be able to know this is what you want to write if you write it this way. Now, now compare with when you write it this way. You see, it kind of now gives a clear uh, meaning to what you're trying to do. So, okay, now we have an external or parent on ordered list. Then we have list items A, B, and C on this level, you can see. Now for the, for the B list, like I said, before you close that, if it has any nested tag or nested elements, before you close it, that's when you bring in the nested part. So inside the B, we nested an unordered element. This is the unordered element. Hmm. Now, inside this unordered element, we have lists one, two, and three. So B, A, B, 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 C. And that's what you have here. B, A, B, B, and B, C. Now, inside the B, B, before you close the B, B or the L, I tag, you have an O, L tag, which is ordered list. And this ordered list has B, B, one, B, B, two, and B, B, three. And look at that. Does this make sense? Or is it making sense, guys? Is it making sense? We are, not, we are not doing it, Abby. Thank God, you've shown us. So they don't need to Abby. switch. Abibi. Abibi. Come <laughs> <Up> to Dubai. <laughs> to Dubai. <laughs> Abibi, come to Dubai. Abibi, come to Dubai. Welcome to Dubai. <laughs> Okay, guys. Welcome, welcome is anybody to confused? Class. Is anybody confused right now? Let us, let us try it first. I want to. I want to. The brain is confusing me that it understands. Okay, that brain is not confusing you actually. It's actually convincing you that it understands. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I actually want to use. I want to be using different colors, so that would kind of make some more meaning. So this is an external one. And then you have this, this, then you have this one. So I'm going to change that to maybe light blue. Mm. Ah, talo mi kon leve, eh? Abego. I would love. When you don't move me. Okay, ah. I don't even move me. I just have power to love. You don't move me. Hello, so we rock on there. Okay, guys. So this is how this works. If there is no question, or if we think we understand this, let's move on. Wait, so wait, don't move on. Don't move on. And we lay our hand on it. Briefly. That's what you, that's what you want to do. That's that's the next thing. Hands on. Next thing. Oh yeah, let us see you. I hope this one will not bust our brain. Oh, Leah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, don't call you now, layers. So, are you guys layers? I'm sorry. Are you? Okay. I lay your hands. Okay, so guys, let's go back to our VS Code. Um, if you want to do it inside the same VS Code, that's totally fine. If you want, I suggest you do it separately so you don't get things modeled up. Um, but for me, I'm going to do it inside the same VS Code. I so, this time we are going into nesting and indentation, and I'm going to just throw this in here. So, nesting and indentation, I throw it in there and it opens for me. But hold on, hold on. If you want to, is this the point where you drag and drop? Yeah, I just decided to drag and drop this time. You can do that. You can open your Finder in Mac. This is called Finder. In uh, Windows, this is called an Explorer. Um, so if you open your Finder, open your Explorer, go into where you have that folder, 3.1, nesting and indentation, drag that folder mm -hmm. into your VS Code, and you have it there, right there. So you will see if you open the HTML, index.html, you will see write your code below. Yes? Sorry, Tigo. <clears throat> Oh, I see the gold. Sorry? I see the gold, though. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's the thing. Inside that thing and that thing. Ah, oh, I'll give you guys a clue. Let me give you a clue to, to solving this. The best approach to this is this. Mm. So, if I'm going to approach this, huh? I would, Wait, I would uh, look. Yes. That, that, okay, so we should start with um we should first try the ABC, wrap it up first with the UN. Yeah, you that, that, that's that's what I actually want to say too. That the best way to approach this is to go with each level first. So go to the first level. The first level is A, B, and C. Do that first. Okay. When you do that, now the next level is embedded inside the B. So go into the B, open the B tag, throw in a ordered list, and have your list B1, B2, and B3. Stop there at that point again. Then move to the next level, which is this level. This level, this one, two, three, is embedded inside B2. Open up your B2 tag, throw in this three. The next level is this, or you can go to this one. This two is embedded inside the B3. Open B3 tag, throw in these two. You see, it's just approach it that way, stepwise. It's simple. It's very easy, guys. Yeah. So we are going to take another 10 minutes to do that. And uh, we start now. Thank you, guys. We have... Um, the first part we have is, uh, let's say, uh, it's going to be an ordered, an unordered list, sorry. And the unordered list has list uh, three three items. Uh, the first one is um, A. Then we have B and C. So I'll just do that as we did before. Uh, so shift option down, down. And I can have B and also have a C. Now, this forms the first part, which is um, this part, A, B, C. Now, the next part is a ordered list, B1, B2, B3, that is nested inside the B tag. So let's go to that. So inside the B tag, uh, before you close it, you drop this down, and then you can have an ordered list. Then you can have your list elements, and this will be B1, and then I can do the same thing, do a shift option down, down. Then I will have B2 and B3. Okay. So this way I've been able to say, so if I save this, let's even start viewing it right away. Um, so I'm going to view mine with live preview. You can view yours with something else, uh, whatever you have there. Where's live preview again? Live server, rather. So live server, I'll close this one. So this is what we have right now. I'm going to make it big. Okay. And let me make this big a little bit as well. Okay. So, so we already got it to this level. Uh, we have B1, B2, B3. But then there's another level again, um, which is embedded inside the B2. 
we have B2A, B2B, and B2C. So let's do that one. So inside the B2, we'll open the tag again, drop down the closing tag. We have an unordered list. And inside this unordered list, we have an LI tag or LI element, a list element. And we have, what's that again? B, what? B2A, B2B, B2C. Okay, so we're going to have B2A. And then I can copy in three places. So we have B2B and B2C. Okay, if I save that and refresh my browser, it gives me that. So we're getting there, right? Now, the next level we have outside that, um, come on. So we have B2A, B2B, and B2C. But then inside B3, we still have a nested one, B31 and B32, which is a ordered list. So we go into the B3, and then we drop down the closing tag of the B3 for us to have a ordered list. Uh, so this one will be OL. And then we have a LI tag, which is B31. Then we have the second one. So I'll just copy and have B32. So that solves that second part. So we have this and we have this. The last level that we have here would be the B, come on, B2AA, B2AB, an unordered list nested inside B2A. So we go inside B2A. Um, where's B2A? B2A. <laughs> We drop down the closing tag. We have an unordered list. And then we drop it down. We have a list element. Then we have our B2AA and our B2AB. And that's it. <clears throat> Ogalatas. Yes, sir. So this is my thing. Um, this stuff, all these lines, the way they are going, um front and back it's not working like that on my own i don't know okay so if it's not working like that on your own uh you may not what have... Danny, what you should do what you should do what you should do let us snap code the heart i just get to see now that what the code let them snap their code why i'm not interested in seeing the code right now uh, bros thank you, you. That's why he's saying this one that is going blah 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 blah. Wait, blah. Uh, if your if your code is not formatted this way, uh, I know you have trust issues. I don't mind it because my own code I, is good. I know how hard okay. it is. If we, if you follow it like this, all of it I will don't lose. Hold on, it. hold on. I know the challenge is having. It's not about the code you wrote, whether it's good or it's not good. Um, Wolf, right? This that's Wolf, uh, right? Yes, sir. So check your prettier. Check if you have prettier installed. Prettier. Okay. Yeah. So go to here, go to this place, the extensions, yeah. type, type in prettier. Then this particular one, uh, this is from, what's the name of that, for, that stupid guy? Okay, it's from prettier.io, prettier code formatter. There are lots of them, but this particular one is the one you're going to download. So okay. check if this is installed. If it's not, try and install it because your code is not getting formatted. That's why you have it that way, or you don't have it to look exactly the way mine looks. Who else have that issue? Is there anybody who is battling with this format? Yes, mine is not showing that way. Okay, check your prettier, check your prettier code formatter. It might not have been installed. It is installed. Um, if your if you already have prettier code formatter installed, what you may need to do is to do a restart. Uh, to do a restart, not of the of your computer, but of your VS code. Now, to do a restart, if you want to give that a try. Uh, if you're on Mac, you are going to press Command Shift P. If I so, if you do Command Shift P, something will open up on the top here, and you just type Reload. It will reload. So you click on Reload window. It will reload your VS Code. That would probably fix it. And okay. if not, and if not, then we can inspect for that if you're on windows it's not going to be command shift p rather it will be control shift p and then the same way you would choose you would type in reload in front of that uh triangle or that arrow you type in reload and then you select reload window it reloads your vs code for you so if there's any extension that is hanging it will fix it for you 
Um, guys, do we have any question on this uh, nesting and indentation section? Mm. Um, if there is no question, we'll take a five minute coffee break. And when we come back, we will continue. Well, with... Yes, sir. I don't know what I did. I don't know whether I extracted my files incorrectly, but I can see that my files are uploading into the, um, what do you call it? Um, what, what do you call this? Uh, your files are uploading. Uploading. I'm uploading one after, like, as in the goal and the index are not uploading together as it used to. Okay, so probably when you want to extract the, the file, you are extracting a file, you are not extracting the folder. So you, you should, or you should do a drag and drop like I did before. So if you open your, if you open your Explorer, hmm. assume you are on Windows. If you open your Explorer, which is this something like this, yeah, and, and you go into where you have that lesson, lesson two, uh, sorry, lesson three, whatever docs. This one, yeah. Double click on lesson three docs. You see the nesting and indentation folder. Just yes. that that folder as it is, and drop it inside your VS Code. You should oh, you should see the two files. Yes, you uploaded now. Fine. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. So, guys, we are going to take a five minute. Break. Oh, that thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. We're going to take a five minute break. Um, coffee break. Let's grab our coffee, and then when we come back, we will continue with anchor elements. Thanks, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. How was the coffee, guys? Did you get your coffee? This is mine. And uh, ah, Jamja, that's coffee. Roasted turkey. Okay. Roasted leg. Is it wrong? Mm -hmm. Guys, and... don't be like Jam Jamo. Take coffee. Don't don't I don't choose do. that. Okay. It's nutritious. Okay, awesome. Nutritious. Nutrition money. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, can we before we uh, you know kind of move on to the next one? Can I show my screen for a bit of a minute? Uh, you know, maybe we can see what's going on. I can't seem to change my nested element, especially for the B3. Uh, no, not the B2A. Uh, I've been able to do that, but the B2B, every, yeah. time, every time I try to move it to a different place, the guy doesn't want to go there as well. Okay, share your screen. Let's see me out now. Okay, share my screen. Uh, Wait, I think I have to give approval. I don't know why you keep asking me that all the time. I don't know where this share screen is. Uh, Where is it? Um, let me see. I think I will have to give. Now you can share. I'm gonna have to pause you for it to share something. Where is the share? Where is the share? Where is the share? Uh, okay, share screen. Uh, okay. Can you uh, yeah. I can see. So which one? So, mm -hmm. um, so this is where I'm stuck, right? Uh, this B2B, uh, you know, this part, I, if you can see my... Uh, yeah, B2B and B2C. That's, that's, where, that's where I'm having problem with the code itself, because when it comes to moving it in between... Okay, so why is your B2B? Uh, where is the code now? It's not, it's not there. I'm not using it because I've had to clean it so many times. Every time I write it, it keeps coming back right under this B2B, B2AB. Yeah, because your B2A, um, your B2, your B2AA and B2AB, they are not inside your B2A. Those ones need to go into your B2A. They are right now sitting under your B2A. So you have to cut from the UL, from line 12 to line 15, cut it, and then go into both all everything, including the UL, from line 12 to line, yeah, aha. Uh -huh. Now, if you go in front of the B2A, you have to, you click enter. No, inside inside that tag. Inside this tag, right? Yeah, yeah. So you click enter, then you drop it in there. So it's always going to be in between the opening and the closing. Now, if you save that, save that. Okay. Wait, B2A. No, no, no. Okay, there's a lot of things. Yeah. Um, 
So let's go backwards. Mm -hmm. A, B are uh, actually that. So now your OL from your line four is actually supposed to be inside of the B. It's, instead of B. Yeah, yeah. So you need to cut from line four, everything. Just cut from line four to line 32 right now. Only spokes? Yeah, everything now to line 32, not 33. Yeah, cut that. Now go inside in front of the B exactly, drop down and drop it in there. So click enter. Nice. So save that first. Well, okay. Yeah, so okay. So the next one would be the so we have A B now B A B B. So the B B, where is B B here? I can't see your B B. B B, B B. So you have you're supposed to have B A and B B inside the B. So inside that UL, uh-huh. So now if you go to if you go to line five and on line five, yeah you need to have that list, BA and BB. If you look in the solution, you will see that there is BA and BB. Oh, sorry, B1, B2. Am I looking at somebody's solution? Uh, Are you looking at my screen? I'm looking at your screen and I'm looking at, oh my goodness. I was looking at uh, Bob. Bob, if ah. I cross you, eh? <laughs> no, I did redo my own. You better redo and take it out of my sight. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay sorry i know i was looking at the wrong uh, this thing for you okay so let's uh, so now after a b c we have b1 b2 so let's go back to your code so b1 we take out the ul the the ul uh hmm, b1 b2 should be inside that ul on line four and line six so the line seven cut line seven line eight it should sit inside of last on line five. Put it on line five. Good. Now, if you save this one, is that supposed to be inside OL? Inside the B, yeah? Inside the B. So if you save this one, then we have the closing OL down. That's perfect. Okay. Now, the next one after that is B2. So inside B2 now, you need to take your B2A, B2B, and B2C. So you cut the, B2C? yeah, there is B2C. Okay. So B2A, B2B, and B2C, where are they? Okay. Those ones would form a list. So inside your B2, mm -hmm. B, that's not B2, B2 is on line six. Yeah, I'm just writing this because I didn't write okay. it. So I'm going to move these to X. So you go inside in front of B2, you open. Okay, so yeah. That's open worse. yeah. So you enter. Okay. Uh, um, so you already have B2, but the list would be uh no 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 no. Can you do can you do, undo what you just did? Just undo what you did. Now click enter, press enter at that point, open another UL tag. Now the UL tag. Would have uh -huh, yeah. Let it ask, let's have a list. So oh, enter again and put in a list there. So the list will be B two A, B two B, B two C. No, no more list. Just remove the extra list. You are having too many lists now. So remove the extra list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So B two A. That's B two A, not B two. B two lowercase A. Uh -huh. Now copy that in three times. So you have B2B, B2, and B2C. So just put your cursor, put your cursor. No, you did two, two cursors. Undo, undo, undo. Something is wrong here now. now. Undo. Okay, now put uh, undo, press escape right now. Escape on your, on your keyboard. Okay, now you can do that. Shift, Alt, down two times. Good. So change the last two to B2B and B2C. And um, so on B2A, now you have to open another UL, another UL inside B2A. Inside B2A. Inside B2A. Uh, so that one would be B3, exactly. So this will be B3. There's no UL here. Uh, so on the same line where you have your B2, so that would be after line 12, you need to drop enter after line 12. Mm -hmm. 
So you need a B3 tag, a B3 there, which is going to be another LI, exactly, B3. Okay, so delete what you have from line 16, on line 16, those inner ones, yeah, to line 28, delete them. And delete that B3 on line 23 as well. We already have B3 in the right place. Save and remove. Do you have uh, Prettier installed? Prettier should be taking out all these extra spaces. I do, for have, it. I do have it installed. I don't know check it. Not. Can you check it? It should be taking out all these extra spaces. Yeah, Prettier. Oh. It is. Hmm. Interesting. We have to figure out how to solve this Prettier issue for everybody. Um. So take out those extra spaces so that we know where we are. And inside B3 now, we are going to have another embedded list. Uh, Bob, are you seeing this too? Yeah. Okay, great. So anybody who did not get it right can actually see what we are doing now again. Um, so inside B3 now, let's go into B3 and um, open up B3. Why is this a gas system coming like this? Uh, it's, 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 it's VS Code uh, setting. You can set, you can, there's a lot of customization you can do on VS Code actually. Um, so now you can throw in the B31 and B32. It's going to be uh, a ordered list now, ordered list. So there's ordered list, yeah. And then throw the throw in the list inside the ordered list. So you have an LI tag, B31, B32. Yeah, and then another one, B32. Are you are you getting the logic now, the, the steps now as we are yeah. stepping inside? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting so B31, B32. Now the last one, I want you to do to do that yourself now. So the last one is the B2AA and B2AB. B2AA. So you can see that this one is embedded inside B2A. So okay, the B2AA and B2AB is embedded inside B. Yeah, okay. under the B2A, correct. So then, Gala, yes. Another issue is that I have is like I've done it up to B2AB, but you see, even if you miss the code at some point and you get to like this, I'm having issues now with this uh, B2B. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to B2B. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it aligns with B2A, mm -hmm. but I don't know how to do that. It's been pushing forward to B two A B side. Yeah, it's because there's something you're doing there. You are actually wrapping it inside the wrong tag. Okay, hold on. You will share your screen after once the day is done with this one. Okay, sir. Your B two A A is not the tag, oh, Baba. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to write L I. Uh -huh. What's going on here? Galatas. Yes. I thought you have finished. Sorry? I thought you have finished. Yeah, yeah, drink tea, drink tea. Don't take anything again. That's fine. I understand that one. I can just the... pop a few inside the, the tree. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm easily triggered. <laughs> It's already marinated. Just don't, don't trigger me. That grill, eh? Uh, uh, now bad as I be. What? <laughs> oh, well, this means that I went that, off. That need that people, they are mad. They are, mad they are developers. Yeah. Nice. They are developers. I see. The hardware developers, they, they, they mad. <laughs> They're just like, how about we join this? And then we join that. As in, I bought, did you know I bought Ninja, um, Waffle maker yesterday. Oh, mm -hmm. the waffle weight come out of that fucking. Need, oh God, that those people they are mad. Their own is different. It's vertical. You you and have to silent, silent majority for the market though. They know they to make they noise. They make noise. They, they, are, they, are, they are the, the apple. They are the apple of kitchen. Uh, uh, whatever. Man. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, Jide, stop, stop sharing. Stop sharing, and let's see. Um, was that Ariomo or Bob? Thank you. That was uh, Babaji. It was Ariomo. No, I mean, the next person should be Ariomo. Now, Ariomo, are you the one or Bob? Who was I speaking to the last time? Sharply. It's Deji. 
Oh, I'm, I'm move almost done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay, sir. They were dragging them when that UK thing came out. That smart in the entire UK, they would now become everything of UK. <laughs> that's why. That's why I'm calling. It's not move of Abadi. It's move of Yalokwaja. <laughs> oh dear Lord! I got that. That's why I'm in it yesterday. Josie is begging me for the recipe. <laughs> Don't tell me about Yao. Don't tell me about oh, that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Last night at only the bell or else you are in the bell. <laughs> How can they get me doing that suya? Eh? We are in this same Canada together. <laughs> I cannot taste that suya. Ah. You don't worry. Now there is greed. There's no fight. Wait, just drive and pass here. Well, that allow me to the meeting, no? Eh? What are you doing outside the I meeting? Can't be inside and be saying this. <laughs> 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 yes. 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 It took me 30 minutes to get this one. <laughs> That's interesting. See, it's not how long it took you. It is, <laughs> it, is, it is that you are able to figure it out. That's what is important. I almost finished myself. I don't do mistake, but they do them again. Don't, don't worry. As, 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 as we are in this class, as we progress, we need these very much school. School that you know that, you know, you both all of us have gone to school before, so you know that there are some people that they catch things in the first, as in once they are in the class and teacher mentions something, they catch it. I'm not that kind of person. I'm that person who must go back home, open that book, do it, read it over and over and over and over for it to stick. Yeah. So, that's not this next thing. No, this, this next thing. This next thing. Uh, I lie. <laughs> grab at first. Well, <laughs> you got this you, I'm just saying, <laughs> some people will grab it at first. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Go on. Go on, Wolf. Okay. Um, we would not continue with anchor elements. Um, so before I continue to anchor elements, I just want to quickly show you guys, like I've always done, uh, since we've handled the list elements, and we've also uh, talked about the indentation and the um, nesting. If you look into any website right now, for me, I'm going to just quickly look into- Sorry, I have a question. Go ahead. How did you um, tell us to reload the VS Code the other time? Okay, I said for you to reload the VS Code, if you're on Mac, uh, you're going to press um, Command, plus P. Command, Shift, plus P. Yeah, I agree. And then something will open like this, if you can see my screen. Then you will type reload. So if you type reload, you will see developer, reload window, developer, reload web view. So just click on reload window. Okay, I get that, sir. Then it reloads your PVS code for you. Okay. So I was talking about, I just want to quickly display, uh, show you guys how these things look in the website so that it, you won't be thinking in the abstracts. Right? Can everybody, if you know your this thing is giving us noise, just mute. Sorry. Um, yeah. So naturally, you might be wondering how does this list thing look like on the website? Because all these things are still looking like abstract. It's simple. What you're looking at here right now, this is a list. This is built using a list element. That's why you can have it. Don't worry. Don't think, okay, why uh, the one you've been doing is, uh, has always been listed in the vertical order, but this is an horizontal list. That's fine. There's a way we do that too. This is done with CSS, uh, which we're going to talk about later. But then it is actually built with a list. And then they use a CSS to change it from the horizontal, from the vertical to horizontal. Another one you will see is this featured item you see list. So you can imagine that virtually every website is built with a combination of lists in one way or the other. Because everything you start to see, will now, you will now start realizing, oh, actually, they are list elements. And a very common one that I'm going to show you on the inspection is the FBI website, uh, in the list of the most wanted in America. If I inspect this site, you can see that we have list of pictures, okay? Although this also could be called a grid. Um, when you get to some advanced CSS, we call this a grid, but then a grid is actually a suburb of a list. So if I inspect this page for you guys, just to see how those lists look like, um, what you're gonna be seeing would be, if I hover into this, um, just a moment, 
So there will be a container that holds this. Can you see? When I click on this, you see we have an LI tag. I don't know if anybody, if everybody can see this on my screen. You would see an LI tag. So the first one is this first LI. The second one is the second one. You see, as I move my mouse, it keeps changing the location, I mean, the blur part of this place. So you can see the first one, the next one, the next one, the next one. So they are all built with a list and they are actually wrapped in a UL list. So these are built with an unordered list. I hope that makes sense to you guys now. So we have an unordered mm -hmm. list and inside that unordered, when I put my mouse on the unordered list, it highlights everything, meaning that that is the parent element, which is the UL. When I move into this one, it goes to just the first one because that's the first list on that element, on that uh, parent. And then the next one, the next one, and the next one like that. So Why you would agree. <clears throat> Sorry? Why is it not showing the bullet? Um... Yeah, so that's what I said. Um, right now we are in the um we are in the beginning stage we'll get to that level how you can remove the bullet so the bullets have been removed from this one because what they want to render is the is, a, is an image it's not actually a text so when you want to use a list element to render an image there is something there's a prop or a property that you're going to pass into this to take out the bullets or the numbers or anything we'll get there what i wanted to focus on right now is the fact that mm -hmm. A list element, an unordered list element has been used here. And inside that, we have different list items, just like what you just finished doing. So how you become an image and all those things, we will get there. It's gradual, okay? Thank you. That is what I want to show you in this one. And um, if you feel like you have some extra time, which I actually strongly suggest, and you want to really dip down into the ordered list elements, um, there is a link I'm going to post in the general section, in the learning resources section. Uh, this is this will be good. Um, this MDN web docs. Um, these are the guys that actually started uh, documenting what it is to build a website, and this their document is always very good to use. Uh, in addition to the W3 school that I gave you guys the last class. But if you want to dive down a little bit deeper into this, um, I strongly suggest that, like I said you should please take your time and read about other list elements from this link. I just posted it on the learning resources section. Okay, guys, let's move on to the next thing. Uh, if there's any question, please flag me down. Uh, if there is no question, the next thing we're going to talk about is the anchor elements. So we'll now be looking at the anchor elements. Let me change my color. Okay. So what is the what is an anchor element? Um, oftentimes you guys would see um, on a website where uh, you'll be reading something and at some point you see something like a blue color, it looks like a link. And when you click that thing, it takes you to another page entirely or even another website completely. How that is done in an HTML is by using an anchor element. So, now, what are these anchor elements? Under that, we'll also be talking about the HTML attributes. Now, the reason is because every anchor element must have an attribute. So I will show you what an attribute is right now. Before I go to that, uh, if you go to any website, uh, let's say we come uh, back to this. You can see in this navigation, you see there are some items here that are underlined immediately you move your mouse on them they become underlined and if you click on them it opens a different page for you those items are actually rendered using an anchor element so how do you do that on the website the way you do it is this um like like i showed before this is actually the tag itself so it has an opening tag of a of course representing an anchor and a closing tag of a while we have the content inside of it so whatever you want to write you want to show on the screen is what you're going to put here but then how does this know where it should take the user to so when you click on let's say you click on this is a link where will it take you to it doesn't know because right now something is missing that thing that is missing is called an attribute <laughs> uh, we use attr to represent that in short form now, how do you insert an attribute into an anchor tag? And this is how you do it. You have an anchor tag 
a opening tag which starts from here all the way here. That's the opening tag and a closing tag as usual. And then you have the content inside as we usually have. But then the only way this is going to take the user to wherever you want it to take them to is by adding these HTML attributes. Now, this attribute, this is the way it is written. You must pass this hyper reference. Uh, this href means hyper reference. It means where are you referring the user to? In this case, it is referring to user or it is pointing the user to http www.google.com. What it means is when you render this in an HTML file, what the user would see on the website is this is the link. And when they click on this is the link, it takes them straight to a Google website. And we're we going to demonstrate that shortly. Now, this thing called um, the attributes, like I mentioned, attributes. I believe my English is clear on that one. Attributes. OK, he actually has few parts. It has um, the href, the equal to, and then the link, the exact link where you send the user to. In this case, we have a way we define the entire element. So the entire element is the A, which is the tag in this case, okay? The href is actually called the attributes. And whatever you have within the quotes, in this case, because it's a string, we have it in a quote. Uh -uh, what's going on? Who is pressing my laptop for me? Is somebody trying to hack me? <laughs> Abiodu, are you hacking me? Okay. Now, nah, don't jump. Nah, John, John. <laughs> okay, I, because Abiodu is the word I know that I, that I used to hack people. Okay. Um, so this thing inside the string, the HTTP, blah, 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 anything after the equal sign, is known as the value. And then the text that actually shows up to the user in the, in the browser would be the contents. And as you know, the closing tag. So I'm trying to explain this to you guys so that you can start understanding those terminologies. They are very important. Um, it's a different thing to know how to write this. And it is very good, or it's a good practice to be able to know <laughs> what they are called and what they represent. So again, the tag, like we already know, we have mentioned this more than 100 times already. We have a tag. Now the href is called the attribute. Whatever you have after the equal sign is the value of the attribute. So the attribute equals value. So it is the value. And then whatever you have here, of course, you know that already, that that will be the content and then the closing tag. So, if we all understand this, don't worry, it might not really click at once. Um, this, all these things requires practice. When you start typing it out, it, then it stays longer than it should, uh, than, than, than it is right now. So just understand the structure. I am going to delete all these dragons I wrote here so it doesn't confuse anybody. I thought the dragons is not helping. Oh, it is helping? I didn't know. Actually helpful. Ah. Okay, I just felt you guys should be able to. Yeah, it's, it's not going. It's, at least the recording is on. So yeah, which means can... whatever you've done is still in the recording. So we'll see. Recording. Yeah, I don't want it to interfere with what I wrote here. And that's why. So yeah, so this is the exact structure of an anchor element, and now we are going to see how this is being used in a real world coding. So the whole thing is an anchor element. It is not complete until you have the attributes and the value you need to note that <laughs> now if you go into your vs code and then you type something like this you have an opening anchor tag and a closing anchor tag and you put a um i'm getting some feedback sir. and you put a text in between this is a link to google now this is what you're going to see now if you click on this is a link to google nothing will happen why? Because it is missing that attribute that is supposed to be inside the opening anchor tag. Now, I want you, to, you guys to notice something very important. The attribute is actually inside the anchor tag before you close that anchor tag itself. 
it is not outside this closing bracket. Um, it's a, it's a, I see that a, lot, a few of us actually made that mistake in the uh, list elements. Uh, so the, let's, let's, let's note that very well this time too. Uh, when you open the anchor tag, before you close this first part, which is the opening tag, before the, uh, the other closing uh, braces, that's where you have your attributes. I'm getting, is it from me? I'm getting this. Okay. That's when you close this thing. So I want, to, I want us to take note of that. So the reason why this is not going to do anything right now, it's because it is missing the attributes. Now, the best way to do this or the correct way to do this is to add that anchor attribute. Now, when we add the attributes, in this case, when we add href equals https www.google.com, then it becomes blue or purplish. And then there's an underline, which shows that this is actually a link. So at this point, when you click on this link, it will take you to google.com. Does this make sense, guys? Is, this, is there any confusion? Are we confused? Show your hand if you're confused. I can go back. Okay, why? What's confusing here, MJ? Unmute and talk. Ah? You said- I don't this... talk the good now. What? I don't, I was talking. Um, so, um, I don't know, maybe I need to see it work mm -hmm. because I don't even know why I'm confused. I just I just feel like there's something lost. Um, the link part, this is something you could always like grab a link from somewhere and pop it in there, right? Mm -hmm. and does that come with the quotation marks so you need to remember to quote them and like, I don't know. Yeah, so if you grab um, a link to a website from the browser, if it doesn't come with a quotation, you have to add this quotation. Um, that's the standard way of writing it. Without the quotation, it will not work. Uh, it must show that it's a string. That's the only way the browser can read it and know that, okay, this is a link that I need to send the user to. So you should, you should put the quotation. Yes, I know, I know. Then Jem has been listening to Peter Obi. That's How? What... <laughs> this is my phone. Go. Are you hearing it? It's been here since you, since I omitted. Okay. So, um, so what I'm saying is, the quote you have to add it yourself, and then grab the link from somewhere. And um, for this purpose of these exercises that you guys will be doing next, I think I already added the quote for you. But just know that the mo this must be wrapped in a quote, whether I add it or I did not you must make sure it is wrapped in a quote, okay? Uh, there are some situations where it will not be wrapped in a quote, but that's not for anchor tag. That's for different types of uh, uh, um, attributes or attribute elements, which we will get to. For a tag, there must be href, there must be equal to, and the link must be wrapped in a quote, in a double quote. Well, it could be single quote, but let's stick to double quote for now. Okay, so when you have it this way, and you click the, this is a link to Google, it takes you to Google sites. Do we still have anybody who is confused? Okay. Now there's- uh, um, Sorry, is that is that a space before the RF? Yes, there must be a space. After the A, anchor tag, there must be a space, and you put your HRF, HRF. We can call it IRF. Ah, Please don't call it IRF, call it HRF. Okay, H reference, which is the hyper reference. Now, the anchor tag can take different types of attributes. Right now, it is taking an attribute for, to link you to a website. There are times it takes a different attribute, which is not gonna be href. Now, for the, this one where we're talking about is the name is href. The next one we will be looking at is draggable. It is still an anchor tag, but then this time we are not passing an href because we don't want it to link someone to another site. We want it to do something else. And what do, what do we want it to do? To drag. So when you pass this kind of attribute, draggable equals true. Now, I'm not gonna stress this true too much, but just gonna give you an idea. There's something we call Boolean 
in coding, which we will get to when we start doing JavaScript. Uh, uh, how, did get, how did we go from um, href to draggable? Can we, we... So it's a different type of, I'm just telling you that there are different types of attributes you can pass into an anchor tag. Okay. okay? One of the types of um, attributes is href. When you have an href, it will have an equal sign and then you pass the link. href means you want that at anchor tag to send the user to a different place, okay? Through a link. And that link is what you put in as the value. Now, you can still use your anchor tag for something else, not just to send users to another site. In this case, you can have a draggable attribute. Now, when you have a draggable attribute, the way it is being written is like draggable equals true. What this tells the browser is that whatever content you have inside here, I want to drag it in between that website. Meaning that if you have this on a web page, if I click on this, this is a link to Google, I can drag it around. That's what it means. This is not a browser, so I won't be able to practicalize it here, but we'll see that. What I'm trying to explain here is not actually the draggable thing. It is the fact that you can pass in different types of attributes to an anchor tag because we are dealing with anchor tag right now, not, not just the attribute. I don't know if I'm making some sense. Again, you can have different attributes passed into an anchor tag. We've talked about the href and we've talked about the draggable. There could be so many more. As a matter of fact, there are many more that you can pass in an anchor tag. Like I did before, there is a link about an anchor tag, which helps to kind of uh, solidify the understanding. So this is an example here. Uh, the same website, but now for an anchor tag, you can see they said the anchor, HTML element, blah, 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 blah. And then they added some link here. If I click on this, it will take me to somewhere else. This is being done using an anchor tag. Same way, they talked about the href, which is the attribute, and this is a typical example here. You can see this. So we have uh, an, uh, an unordered list. Inside that, that unordered list, we have a list element, and the list element carries an anchor tag. The anchor tag is a website. So now the past ex example.com, which, which doesn't exist. I don't think it does exist. Uh, anyway, it's just for the test. And then yeah. they put the website. So if you click on this website, it, it should take us to example.com. Same thing here. We have an email. If you click on this email, it would on your it would instruct your computer to send an email to somebody, and that person is going to be blue at example.com. So this is the way an anchor tag is being used. Don't get confused. The same way we can use an anchor tag for a phone. So if we code a phone, somebody's phone number inside an anchor tag, you can actually dial that person's contact from a web browser. That's why you see sometimes when you are on the website, you're searching for a phone number, then it shows up, you click on that phone number, your phone just pop up a call to that person. This is how it's been done. You can use an anchor tag to handle that. So the only thing you do is to pass it into an href and then write telephone, the, uh, semi, I mean, colon, put the phone number and that's it. Clicking on this would call that number. So. An anchor tag can take as much as possible as it exists, different types of attributes. Um, if you go through this document, you will see other types of attributes that we have uh, that we can pass into an anchor tag. Like I did before, I'm going to post this um, into this place for you guys uh, to kind of read further to be able to get a better understanding of how the anchor tag works. But for now, Take it from me that to use an anchor tag, you need to have the tag itself. You need to have the attribute. You need to pass a value to that attribute before it could work. So if that is taken, is there any question before we move to an exercise for this <laughs> section, anchor tag? Hey, wait. I don't have really a question at this point. Okay, maybe you try the exercise first. And then if you have any question, you can. Okay, uh, Alamin, any question? You turn on your camera. No, no, no. no. Ah, no. Okay. I just want to focus. <laughs> you do like this. Don't focus, Patricia. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. So let's let's quickly go through an exercise for the anchor elements. Um, trust me, it is easy. Um, it's the same way I've shown it here. Let's go to our VS Code again. Um, let's open the files that we already have. This time we are going to be looking at 3.2. We're going to be looking at 3.2. We can drag our 3.2 anchor element into VS Code. And if we do that, we will be looking at the goal first. What's our goal? This is our goal. Load up. My system is now doing shit. Wow. So this is going to be easy. It's going to be an easy exercise. Um, we just want to have this kind of thing. We want to have my top my top five favorite websites. Um, I already added some websites. Oh no, I did not. Okay, I don't want to because I want guys to just browse any random website and put the link in there yourself. But what we want to achieve is this. For me, my top five favorite websites, Product Hunt, Smash the Walls, Wordle, Hackathiper, Stellarium. So you're going to come up with your list of five favorite websites. You would have a content, which is what we're going to be seeing like this. And then you go to that website. It must be an existing website because we want to try this out to make sure it works. You would um, grab the link. If you don't know how to grab the link to a website, it's simple. Um, what you do is go to any website you want. Like if, I, if you want to copy... This website, as it is right now, Canadian, really Canadian Superstore, you just double click. You just have to double click on in the um, browser URL bar. This is called a URL bar. You double click in the URL bar. And once you double click, it highlights the link for you. This is disturbing me. Maybe you should go up. OK. Check it out. Ah, where is it? It's lost it. Okay, so you double click in the URL bar and then you can do control C or command C as the case may be. So you copy it and then you come into that whenever you write your code and put it as your attributes. This one you see here is gonna be the content, that's it. So just list five and try and use the ordered list so that you can have one, two, three, four, five before you have your anchor tag. So now uh, the clue here is this. So if you look at, the website I sent to you, this one, anchor tag, they already did something like that looks like what we are trying to do now. Let me just give you that clue so that you don't waste too much time trying to do this. Uh, so this is something, this is like what, what I want you guys to do. It's simple. Uh, in this case, you're going to have an H1 element where we have it um, here, my top five favorite website. And instead of using the unordered list here, we want to use a ordered list and then put on put in your list here if you are try, if you go and look at this if you're trying to look at this while you build your own that's fine but then while you are looking at it don't just copy try to understand how this is being embedded or how it is being nested it is very important you would see that the anchor element is embedded inside a list element to be able to achieve that format so guys Let's try, let's give it, a, let's give this a try for the next five minutes. Is that okay? Or 10, let's do 10 because you have to search for website to use. Yeah. So for the next 10 minutes, let's give this a try and see how that works before we move on to the next thing. Any questions, sir, ma? Mm -hmm. If there is no question, hmm, I would start the timer. For 10 minutes, we we'll would quickly work on this. Thanks, guys. What do we, what do we next? We have one session. I mean, one test it. Point four. I should test it. Yeah, test your links and make sure they work. They are working. I want Netflix. Okay. So, yeah, it's as simple as that, actually, guys. Um, it's just need to know how to embed those things. Um, so for me, I'm going to quickly try it out. Uh, if you are still working on it or you are stuck at some point, you can look at what I do. Uh, so for me, I'm going to be looking at the goal up and I'll be writing my code below. So um, we have 
I already put it, gave you an H1, uh, my top five favorite websites. And then now we want to throw in a list. So you can see that we have a list and then we have the tags, I mean, the anchors inside the list. So first I'm going to start with an ordered list uh, because this is ordered. So anytime you see the one, two, three, four, five, it's an ordered list. So we have an ordered list. And then next is I'm going to have a list element. So inside the list element is where I'm going to have my um, link for the for the anchor tag. So I'm going to have an anchor tag A. It's closing. First, I'm going to write the product on inside. And then the next thing is to add the tag. I mean, the attribute. So now the attribute to be href equals to this. And if I go into my browser, like I just, like I explained to you guys, uh, if you put in product on in Google, I will just open up the, the web page and then click, double click, copy, and throw it in here. That's it. That's it. That's the first part. So I already have my product on. It's as simple as this. If I try to refresh this, or first let me save it. And then look at it in the browser. Uh, open with live server. So I have product ons, right? To do the other ones, I'm just going to copy this in five times. I mean, if I uh, copy them five times the way we did before, I want to expand it. This time is slow responding right now. It needs to be restarted. Oh, no. So as I always open the site directly. That's nice. Interesting to know. So the next one for me, uh, if you have not finished doing your own, you can watch me and you can try it again later after the class. Uh, smash the walls. <laughs> and the next one, I'm going to change the link later. I just want to put in the content first. What do? Uh, the next one will be Hacker Typer. Please zoom in, zoom in. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes, how that voice is sounding like threats. Ah, I say if I, if I we are doing it. No zoom in one more time. Now slap. <laughs> they, go, they go tear me slap for this class, eh? <laughs> the <laughs> Stellarium. Ah. What's going on? That's a larium. What did they do for that site? <laughs> Go check them now. <laughs> no, no, no. Why waste time now? Just tell me now. <laughs> uh, why? When you have Google with you there? Ah, uh, is your friend now? <laughs> so, I will start with Stellarium, and then I would um, copy the link. Uh, Stellarium.org. It's an open source software, actually. I'm using it currently on the project. That's why it came. And it's a great um, product. It's a great product from some guys. Anyway, my system is very slow right now. What's the third one? Uh, Hacker Typer. Let me just use the same thing. I have a lot of servers running, that's right. Hacker Typer. Yeah. Who that? Who that? Okay, so I'll copy Hacker Typer. And I'll put the link here. And like that, like that, like that, like that. I'm not going to finish it out. Oh, what did I do? I'll just stop at this point because before we close this, I must talk. I must touch something else. Is product hunt the same as hack? Okay, sorry, apologies. I am just editing them one by one. Hmm? I said I'm not going to finish. That. I'll just leave it at that, just to test the links. So if I save this and test the links, uh, refresh the browser. If I open product on now, it should open product on website for me. And that's it. It opened. If I try to open Stellarium, it should open. 
That's Tellarium. So it's working, and yours should work as well. Akataipa, it opens as well. Um, now something happened here when I, if I click without using the command, it opens right in that place in that same page. But if I use the command and click, it opens on a different page. Now, there's a way we do that too because you must be able to control um the users of your website so when you build a website and you have such links you don't want sometimes you don't want the users to click a link and then take them open the new link inside the same page it, that means they have to do back to go back to where they were before so you may want them to open that link in a different page there's a way we do that and i'll show you guys it's, uh it's an attribute too which we must exactly. add to make it work we must add a target um so that's that but right now my links are working and I, I assume yours should be working as well. So if your link is working, you should clap for yourself because you've been able to build, yeah, yeah, because you've been able to build a, a link on a web page. And this is very important in any website. You can bear with me, like you, you two can agree with me that it's very important. I had, I don't think there's any website ever that would not have something like a link where you can click and go to the next thing and like that. So yeah. That's that for that. Do we have any question? Is anybody still finding it difficult? Do you want me to explain something else again? Uh, before you go, if they uh, open within the new, which, I mean, within the tab, it is so, so difficult. Why don't you? What's that? that? What's that? You want to open the link within the same tab instead of opening another tab that you were saying. Oh, if you want to open the link. Is it just? Is it just? It is. It, it is not. It is not hard. I'm just trying to reduce the things I put into your brain. I, you know, I have a, I have a plan, and uh, I don't want to be going outside my plan. But then, you, if you guys want to see this, I'll show you. So there is another attribute. You can have more than one attribute in an anchor element. There's another attribute called targets. And you see when I type target, it opened up something for me, a suggestion window. Uh, that's one advantage of VS Code. It's always built with some plugin that suggests things to you. So if I add target and you add equal to, you can always add underscore blank. Now, when you add target equals underscore blank, it says open this web link in another page. If you say target equals just this uh, double quotes without having anything inside, then it opens inside that same page. Okay? So it's all about adding an attribute to be able to achieve that. Uh, we're going to be using this. No worries. The reason why I'm not talking about it is that this is not the right time. When we get to when we start building a real web page, which is, which, which is going to start happening from next week, um, then we'll be using blank. Uh, we're using a target uh, attribute. Because there are some things you need to open in a different page. Then we'll be able to talk more about this and how it works. So right now, just for an, uh, an information, okay? Yeah. Yes, um, um, Ogala, yes. my own question is, when I'm testing the link, I don't know, maybe it's my own system or anything, it will take me to the link and it will still, like, it will open two different um, tabs. On my, I don't know if I can share my screen and show you what I'm talking about. Just go ahead. I'm gonna stop sharing right now. Okay. Can you see my screen now, sir? Yes, sir. I'm looking at myself. Okay, now if I do command and click, it will open to, it will open this and it will now open this to, I don't know, this yes. for the, the link. Do okay. command and click from here, let's see. Can you click on this page? Click on this one now, as you're, as you're on this page. Just do, don't do command, just do click. Just click on the PDF drive. Okay, I'm doing that. Let's see. Nothing? Click on Netflix. Still. Click on Netflix. Okay. okay, go to your code. Okay. 
I'm here. Yeah, I'm looking at your code. Yeah, your code looks good. So don't use command. Just click on any of the links. So it's... you can use command and click here. We'll open on another page. That's what I did. No, uh, well, Galactas, if you, okay, let me just. Can you close this one? Yeah, close this one. Mm -hmm. Go back to I your. I come here from. Okay. If I come here and I do command no. click. Uh-huh. It would open what two different tabs. You see, it opened this and it opened these two. So this, the first one, it is going to take me to the PDF drive. And this, it would show me, you know, this. Maybe PDF drive is not loading fast. Let me do for another one, like, let me close that. First. No, don't use command. Yes. I just, I want you to just click. No, don't press command. There's something I'm trying to get here. So go back to your uh, As, Don't you think it's because it's opening from, from the um, preview? So when you do, when you click, a lo when you just click, it, it take you here, right? Yes, sir. And when you do command click, it open two it browsers. Opens. One, yeah, one this, and one will show that. And one will show this. Can you go back to your code again? It, 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 is anybody seeing that as well on their own side? So for me, if I do from the preview page, if I click on it, it opens up Best Buy, but it also brings up this screen that he's saying. Browser. The brow it opens your browser, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it opens oh. my browser and it, sh it has Best Buy to the left. And the, the this is my top five thing with the one, two, seven, whatever screen yeah. on the right. Okay. So it opens, two, it opens two tabs for you as well. Yeah. Mine, mine opens just one tab. And if I now click on the link, it just opens the site. Okay, you, you take you, you first of all throw that thing into a browser, then you now click on the link, then it opens the site. Okay. No, no, no. This this page that was open like that, the one two seven. You opened it. Then if I click on any of the link listed, it mm -hmm. then open the particular link. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, this could be I don't know. This could be um the behavior of the live preview that you are using. Uh, you know, I'm not using live preview right now. I'm using, uh, it's actually like I'm using a browser. So that's why my own is not behaving like that. So I'm, I'm assuming right now that it's a behavior from the live preview that you're using. That's fine. Uh, what I, is, I'm thinking that, you know, it, can I stop sharing? Yeah. It's like taking you to your website and then opening your link on another tab, basically like. Yeah. In that whole... yeah. Yeah, I think it's the, it's the way the live preview is built to behave. So that's fine. What is important is that your link is working. So when it when it opens it in the browser and then you click on the link, it now opens that site. That's what we're looking for. Okay. This is just for yeah, a short yeah, yeah, if you're both using um, Mac now. Yeah, Mac. But my own is not behaving like that. Okay. We will not, we will not spend time on that. Um, we are using that live, uh, live preview right now because we are still in this stage. Um, when we progress a little bit further, we'll stop using that. We'll be using the real browser. We'll be, we'll be seeing our website live on the browser. So we'll, we'll be doing that for now. Okay, before you leave, because I know everybody wants to leave now and we have seven, eight minutes to go. And okay, I cannot, you, must, must, you guys must do this one. Then I'll use the exercise as an assignment for you. So you're gonna have two assignments today. Because of the fact that uh, time yes, I mean, do, is it what, do from home? You do one in the class and do one from home. Or if you want to do both from home, no problem. Just post the solution in the distance. I, I must spend this last minute. Like, go through the okay, class. okay, okay, okay. I want to do this. I'm not. I want to do this part. I cannot go without doing this part. <laughs> I won't come back to this next week. We have two topics. I want to <clears throat> Of course, the people are already people are already dropped the solution and the listing now. If you have not dropped yours, even the next one, do they cover in the answer? <laughs> okay, so we are going to move on to image oh, elements. Um, image elements is uh, that type of um, element that combines okay. two things that we've learned before. Uh, so image element, as you guys can see here, it's a self-closing element. That means it has a self-closing tag. If you guys remember. We already discussed two types of self-closing tags. One of them is the horizontal element, and the other one is the break line. Oh, wait. A break element. Is the break line element. I mean, that thing is behavior. Break element. 
like that. So another type of self-closing tag is the one we have in image. So you'll be wondering how do they bring images into the website? It's simple. It's with the use of this image tag. So the structure is that there's gonna be an image opening tag, which is self-closing, there's no closing tag. And then there will be an attribute like we did before, we had an attribute. And now the image element only accepts the source attribute, not only accept the source attribute, but you must take the source attribute and some other attributes that we'll be looking at. So the source attribute is represented as SRC, SRC standing for source, and then you put in the URL. Uh, the URL means the same thing we did before. You're gonna copy HTTP, whatever, whatever, from your website where the image is being launched. Um, so normally, or in most cases, when we want to bring image into our, um, our website, we will use the URL, we will first of all deploy that image to a, to, um, a particular um, server, and then we can bring the link of that image into this place, which forms the source. Uh, although when you're building your website, you will be pulling your images right from your code. So, but then there has to be a URL, whether it's gonna be an internet URL or a local URL. That's why I didn't put a specific one. So it's gonna be a URL here. So it's more or less the same thing as we have in an anchor tag, except that this is a self-closing tag and it takes a source attribute instead of href or draggable. Now, there will be other attributes that we're gonna pass here to do some things for us, which I'm gonna explain. Uh, one of those attributes is the alt attribute. Alt means alternative. So now, websites are not only built for people who can read, who, who, are, who can see and read the website. When we are building websites, there's something called accessibility options. You are also building that website such that people who are disabled, in other words, who cannot see, will still be able to use that website. Now, for them to be able to use the website using screen reader, they need to have, you need to put in the alt attribute in your image tag. And you will see how it is being put. When you put the alt attribute, for example, if your image is actually an image of like what I have on the screen right now, this is how you're going to represent that. You have the tag itself, which is the image. You have the source, like I said before, it's going to be an attribute equals value. So this is the attribute name and that's the source. This, the whole thing here is the value. That is where this image is being launched. So when you have this in your HTML file, whenever you render, this is being rendered on the browser, this is what you are going to see. Um, this pixom.photos is a random website. Uh, it's a random photo website. If you go there now and put this link in, in the browser, it might bring an, a different kind of image, but it's actually built that way to randomize pictures and re return to you just for developers to test. So that's why we're using this link. And um, so what I wanted to grab from here is that this is how you represent an image in an HTML tag or an HTML element using an image tag, the source attribute and the value, which is the link to that image. Now, if we have now the, the alt attribute that I was talking about is actually a way to help um, the, the challenged users to be able to know what kind of image, since they cannot see an image on the website and they cannot feel it. Now, when they use a screen reader, you need to pass in an alt. The, what, it mean, what this means is that the screen reader will be able to read the kind of image that is on that website. So when it gets here, they will read forest at sunset, which describes this image. So they would be able to know that there's an image on this website. After you must have passed your source attributes, which actually holds the exact image you're trying to display. Now, how do we see this real life? Let me show you guys. Um, so if we go to, let's use the, let's use the bbc.com website. Let's say, uh, so let's first of all see how they were able to put in this image here. So if I right click on this image and I inspect the website, what you would be seeing is an image tag. You can see that IMG. So when I hover on this, you see how that image was highlighted. Okay. And inside the image tag, you see an alt. The alt is describing what is in that image. So if, um, like a blind person is using this website, what they will hear from the screen reader is President Joe Biden left with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Okay, 
Now, they will be able to know that, oh, okay, there's an image there and that's what is in the image. Of course, they cannot see. So that helps them to have an idea of what they are, what they are reading. Uh, although you will see source sets, which I'm gonna explain later, but for now, we're using source, SRC. Source set and source, they merely do the same thing. It now depends on what is being used in the backend. We won't get to that. But just take it from me right now, for now, we'll be using source, not source set. Now, so now you can see how image are being, images are being rendered on the website. And uh, to just practicalize or let's simulate when a blind person is reading this page. I have something installed on my Chrome browser. You don't have to. Uh, it's called Siktide. Siktide is a screen reader that mostly blind people uses to read the website. And if I go to the blindness, blindness uh, tab and turn it on, it's going to help me to read what is in the homepage link. Good. So it's going to be reading what is on this page. Now let's see what happens when it gets to the uh, to the image section. So you can see the red uh, rectangle is moving as I yes. click next. I want to move straight to the. Um, let me just use this to where we have the image so that we can see how it reads the image. So now we are on the image. Oh. I'm too fast and my system is application. Keep quiet. Advertisement. Okay, so I will move back to the image and see how it reads that image. I'm just showing you the importance of that attribute element. President Joe Biden left with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy image. That's right. So that's how it does it to a blind person. And that's why this alt is very important. So whenever you are rendering an image tag or image element, you must not forget to have an alt. And what that alt does is for you to be able to describe what you have in that image. That's it. That's all about image element. Sorry? Does it not matter how you place it? Because it looks like in that website, they had the alt first before the source. Oh, no, the arrangement does not matter. It can come before the source. What is important is you must have a source and you must have an uh, alt. Uh, in any uh, HTML element that uses attributes, if you have more than one attribute, the arrangement would never matter, whether the image one or the anchor tag. Just make sure you have the, the right attributes on that um, element. So the arrangement would not, would not matter in this case. Now, if there's no question on that, or let me ask, is there any question on this? Uh, yes. I can see that there is no um, quote after the. Um, it was forest. just. I'm sorry, it was just missing. It should, okay. There should be a quote, um, and I'm gonna put that right away. Okay. There should be a quote. Thank you. Um, yeah. So if there is no question. I assume there's no question. Would I, uh, I'm not going to keep you guys, except you want to stay. There are two things that we're going to do now. You guys would help me to solve this image elements exercise. Um, so if you go into your, you can actually go and do it later and post your solution like we always do in the assignment section for this one. So this one will go into the assignment. Um, you would go to that folder again and you look for the image which is 3.3 .3. on the image. Let's quickly try and see that how it looks before you guys go. I'm sorry if I'm keeping you. Oh, no need to be sorry, sir. Of course, I like to stick to time. It's not mine. But, but you, you said you're going to take one hour now. But people said no. So I assume we are not taking oh, that they one they voted. Hour. Oh, girl. Nah, people said no. So very, very funny that as you are sticking to time. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That has, that has you and got you actually. You want to drag your professor? Believe him, I will fail you in this class. Okay, so um, this is our goal. I know that a lot of us here will not actually align with this, but I'm oh. just assuming. I'm assuming that we will align. Oh. Is it that you are a cat person or you are a dog person? If you are a cat person, you will only use the cat image that I have in this index.html. So I have two images the kitten and the puppy. If you're a dog person, you're gonna grab the puppy image. If you're a cat person, if you're none of those, 
just pick one, please. Help us to just choose one and stick to that one. <laughs> you, if you're a cat person, you, you pick the kitten. So whichever one you choose, this is what we want to see. It's simple. Just do I am whatever person and then put the image here. Now, if you remember how we did this, pretty simple. In that case, you need um, you need an image tag. You need a source, which I've already provided you. In that, I already gave you a source. So the source you're going to be using is this. Just throw it in the double quotes. And then you need an attribute, an alt, or I mean an alternative. So the alt would be what is in that picture. You need to add that for us, please. So whichever one you're doing, use that. Put an H1, uh, H1 tag, which shows the title. And then put the code that shows the cat or the dog, whichever one you choose to do. That's as simple as that. If you can do that for us, that's what you have as the exercise, which we're supposed to do in this class. But like I said, you don't have to wait. You can do that later and post on the exercise page. Now, before you now, before we conclude this part of the whole thing, the, there's, there's supposed to be a project for today. And that project you're going to do as an assignment, guys. You don't have to do that here. You do it as an assignment. This is what we want to achieve for the project. You, are going to, you all are going to create a birthday invite. Um, you're going to put all this on the birthday invite. It's going to have the title. It's my birthday. Put the date, your birth dates on that in an H2. Uh, you need to render a cake image, which I already provided. So if you go into the folder, again, you will see 3.4 birthday invites project. And if I throw that in here, if I throw that in here, uh, this is what we want to achieve, like I showed in that. Um, we have the title, we have the image, we have the text, and everything. This is what we're trying to achieve. Now, I already, yay! How did I do this? There's a solution in that. Damn it! <laughs> Ah. The solution, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is epic. <laughs> oh, yeah, where did she say you say you should download before class. If you have told us to download now, perhaps you'd have thank you, Galatas. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, I will not make that mistake next time. Okay, uh, <laughs> try, try and be honorable, don't look at the solution and uh, <laughs> protect your integrity. So, <laughs> okay, so this is what we're trying to achieve. I already gave you uh, the source image so that you don't have to search for birthday cake, uh, which is here. Um, and then there's something else. So in that project, you're going to have something else here, a link, an anchor tag that should take someone to your address. We want to see your home on the Google map. So... Although it's not going to be your home anyway, don't give us your address for security reasons. I already gave you an, a Google map link, which is here on line five. So when you get to that point, just copy this Google map link and put it on that place so that whenever anybody clicks on this, it will take them to a Google map and show an address. Okay, so everything we've learned today is combined in this project, right? The, the list is here. The anchor tag is here, and the images is, I mean, the image is here as well. So we combine everything into one project. It's not looking fine because we have not done CSS. When we get to CSS, we start thinking of how to style this to make it look nice, colorful, and all that. But for now, we are doing HTML structure. So just structure it this way. This is going to be fun, right? Uh, so that's it for the projects. And uh, that was it for the exercise on images. Like I said, if you want to stay back to do the exercise or both, that's fine. If you don't, that's okay. You can leave, do it at, at your own leisure time. Just make sure we have these two solutions before the next class. So for the project, you will post it under the project channel. So the first one, which is the exercise, would go into the exercise channel and the project, ah, ah, now wow. And the project would go into the project channel. Uh, you will see that the, the dog image that I gave you here in the exercise is actually a GIF image. It's not like a static image, but they both work the same way. I intentionally did that so that you can see that whenever you, even if you have a GIF, you don't think, ah, how do I do this one? It's also an image. A GIF is an image. 
So that's why I give her. So your dog should be doing cra 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 when you put it there, right? So yeah. Any question, guys? So I can release everybody. Some people want to go swimming. Some people want to talk to their boyfriend. I don't know what others are doing. For me, yeah, I have something to do too. Okay. So any question before we go? No question. I love this. Um, my only question would be that I might be reaching out to you privately, if possible, like I did the last time. Is it on what we learned today? On anything. So if it's on what we learned today, like I said, it's not because I'm avoiding anybody. It's because I want all of us to learn. Whatever question we have, we'll post it on the general channel. I would respond, no doubt. But I want others to see that question and learn too. There are some Audrey. things others do not know, but they don't know that they do not know. But when somebody asks and I explain, it, it helps everybody to understand. So it won't be one-on-one, -on -one, so that I won't be ask, answering the same question for everybody, okay? So when you have questions on what we learn, please and please post it on the channel. I would respond and others will read and learn as well from them. Does that make sense? No offense. Yeah. It makes sense. Okay. Makes sense. Sorry, something seems to be wrong. Okay. What is it? Ah, okay. When I saw Gide Zone, I saw I thought I saw I'm a mad person. I have to read the game. <laughs> <laughs> I am a dog person. Mage, and then we have source, and then we have quote. Mine is showing a link of my stuff. A link for which one? Is that weird. For the dog, for the yeah. okay, that means you are doing something wrong. It should yeah. be showing the image. Yeah, it's showing the image, but it's also showing like a link at the top and under. Did you add something else? Maybe you added. Maybe you didn't delete one of the links that I gave. I gave two links to an image. You need to delete one. If you are taking the cat, delete the dog. If you are taking the dog, delete the cat. Oh, okay, that's why. <laughs> I still have both links. Uh, anyway, I still have both links. So one was showing up the what was showing at the bottom. That's why I know. Okay, so uh, let you know. Um, what uh, else? Before you guys run away, has anybody run? Nobody. Okay. There's something I forgot to tell you. I mentioned it, but I didn't show it again after that. So on the issue of uh ah, where was that? Uh <laughs> 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 it's not fully mandate on the issue of, i mentioned something that you can actually control your list not to start from one you can specify yeah, yeah, where yeah. you want it to start right yeah <laughs> yes that's the one i, I was talking it, yes i mentioned it but i didn't show you how to do that just okay. to quickly show that um so to show that i'm going to use this next thing as an example to, to display that for you guys um so you remember when we're doing the nesting, I can actually specify where I want, uh, where is the ordered list here? I think we have one ordered list. Uh -huh. So we have an ordered list here. I can't see anything now. I'm not sharing my screen. I can't. You are. I am. No. Can you, you don't act yourself. Good. Maybe you are trying to act people. You just act yourself with that now. Okay. So now what I'm trying to say is that in this ordered list, the one we have inside the B, uh, which I'm going to go back to quickly. Let me run it to show it. Um, live server. I'm sorry, guys. I just don't want to forget telling you about this before we go. Okay. So you can see that we have one, two, three. Now I can control where I want this to. So I can say, okay, start this one from five. And how to do that is to go into that ordered list tag, which is here. And then I will put an attribute. Remember, attribute. It starts nice. equals five. Okay. What this is saying is that for this particular list, start it okay. from five. Okay. If I refresh this page, you see five, six, seven. Okay. So it's just a matter of adding that um, attribute into it. And that's why I posted that link to the list element for you guys. It helps. If you can read further, you will see that there are other things that I did not say in this class. The essence of, in the essence of this class is to show you how these things work, allow you to go and dig for that to figure things out. If you have any questions, you ask me, but just know that there are so many things I will not talk in this class. 
well, there's something called reading the documentation in coding. You must read documentations to learn more because there's no teacher on earth that will teach you everything. Of course, we know that in, even when we, when we were in school. So just know that you can actually do a start and tell it where to start. I can do the same thing for this other part too, where I have another OR. I can do start equals 20. So what did this, this one? Have I, just accept me in first, Abeg. I can't ah. see, so I'm trying to get in okay. first. Okay. Uh, so you can see when I when I throw a start equal 20 for this one, it started from 20. Just so you know that you can control where you how you want it to start and what number you want it to start from. Thank you for your patience. And with this, I would say we call it a day for today's class. Any question? Before uh, you call it a day, can you repeat what you said? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what I'm saying is that where you have a ordered list like this, you can control where you want that ordered list to start. So what you need to do is to throw in a start attribute. So we have an attribute called start. You should type in start inside the OL uh, tag and put the number in front of it. So start equals five. I can change this to start equals seven. When I save it, it should change. It should now start this list from seven. So you can see that seven, eight, it didn't start from one. If I didn't add any of these, then it will start from one automatically. The same thing I did here, instead of starting from one, I started it from 20. So I just added start equals 20, okay? So it, it makes this list to start from 20. There will be a time when you start writing your website, you will need, not, you will need to render a list and you don't want it to start from one. So that's how to control that. It's just, it's actually more than that, but I won't say more than this for now. So I don't blow your heads. Um, at some point, I'll tell you other things that this, uh, this thing does for us. It helps us to reverse a list too, but we'll leave that for now. Thank you. Any other question? We'll close the class. I'm stopping the recording now. And uh, of course, even if you have questions, you can ask. If you don't, that's fine.